Did you know that you can actually inflate a balloon without using your lungs? All you need is a plastic bottle, vinegar, baking soda, a funnel, a rubber band, and a balloon, of course. First, pull some baking soda into the balloon using your funnel. And now, pour the vinegar into the bottle. You don't need a lot. Just fill about a third of the bottle. Let's go ahead and put the balloon over the bottle. But don't tip the soda inside the vinegar yet. Secure the balloon with a rubber band and tip it over to make the soda fall into the vinegar. And now you can step back and enjoy the show. When the baking soda and the vinegar are mixed together, they release CO2 that will inflate the balloon. You can use the inflated balloon to show your friends another trick. Grab a comb and rub it on the surface of the balloon. Now you can bend the water flow in your sink with static electricity using your brand new electrified comb. Just don't try brushing your hair. Can you really pierce a balloon without popping it? The answer is yes. You're gonna need a skewer or a long needle, a balloon, petroleum jelly, and some courage. Scratch the balloon with your fingers and make it more flexible. Now, blow steadily into the balloon. Stop before blowing it to the full size. This will make the trick easier to perform. Put some petroleum jelly on the needle. Now, find this darker area near the knot where the balloon is less stretched and just pierce it all the way through the top, like this. Balloons are made up of polymer chains. They're so tiny that they seem invisible to the human eye. This trick works because the polymer chains are less stretched on the neck of the balloon. It was enough room to allow the needle in between the chains without breaking them. But if you try the same technique on the sides of the balloon, it will definitely pop. By the way, hairspray actually helps keep the air in the balloon longer by sealing the surface. But if you apply hairspray on the outside of the balloon and then touch it when it's not yet dry, the balloon will shrivel. Isn't it magic? Beware, our next trick can make you question gravity. Pour some plain water into a glass bottle. Not much, about a quarter. Put the bottle in the microwave for a minute. Meanwhile, prepare a bowl with colored water to make the trick more visual. Take the bottle out of the microwave, turn it upside down and pour it into the colored water. The bottle will soon begin to fill with water. Can you guess why? The air expands when it's heated. The bottle and the air began to cool down, and the air contracted, which caused the water to move. Not only wizards can make things disappear. Fill a plastic container or transparent glass with sunflower oil. Dip a glass rod inside the oil. Can you see it now? Oil and glass bend light the same way because they have almost equal refractive indexes. Therefore, it's impossible to see how the wand bends light inside the oil. To make this trick even more epic, pour equal parts of water and oil inside a glass and dip the glass rod inside it. You'll see it in the water, but it will disappear inside the oil. Have you seen this epic instant freezing trick? Here's how you can repeat it at home. Grab a small plastic bottle of clean drinking water. Leave it for about four hours to bring it to room temperature. And now put it into a freezer and wait for an hour and a half. After that, take it out very carefully. Try not to shake it at all. Now hit the bottle strongly or shake it and see what happens. Not only is red cabbage rich in fiber and vitamins, but it's also pretty useful for homemade scientific experiments. Boil red cabbage in pure water and wait until the water gets colored. Red cabbage contains a chemical called anthocyanin. It changes color when it's mixed with an acid or a base. That's why if you mix your cabbage with water with different ingredients, you'll get different colors. Bases like soda will make it blue, but acids on the contrary will create reddish colors. You can prove it by adding some lemon juice to your cabbage water. The water will become pinkish and if you add vinegar, you'll get an even more vibrant pink color. If you have a juicer, you can try the same experiment with red cabbage juice. Initially, it will have a more vivid purple color, but under the influence of additional liquids, 
the color will change. Can you guess which color you'll end up with if you mix cabbage juice with bleach? It's almost transparent, but still has a greenish-yellow tinge. The next trick is very trendy among artists. Here's what you're gonna need. Liquid soap, cotton buds, milk, and acrylic paints. You can use food coloring for this tip. Pour a little bit of milk into a wide bowl or a plate. You don't need a lot. Then put a few drops of paint into the milk. And now dip a cotton bud covered with soap. The patterns will begin to change. That's because the fatty molecules in the milk get attracted to the molecules of soap. When you're satisfied with the pattern, you can put a sheet of paper on top of the milk. And voila, your abstract masterpiece is ready. In fact, this technique is related to an ancient paper marbling called ebru. Artists created colorful patterns by sprinkling and brushing color pigments on a pan of oily water and then transformed those patterns on paper. Friction helps people walk on the road instead of sliding on it. And it also allows us to perform this cool experiment called floating rice. Fill a small plastic bottle with rice. You can use a funnel to make the task easier. Shake the rice for a while. And now try to push a chopstick or a pencil inside the bottle. If you did everything right, the stick will get stuck in the rice. You can also try using different types of grains and see what happens. Have you ever tried to put an ice cube into oil? Well, you can try today. It will create these cute little drops that will fall into the bottom of the glass because they're heavier than oil. Here's an easy way to stick an ice cube to a string without any glue. Place an ice cube in water. Put a piece of string on top and sprinkle it with salt. You don't need much, otherwise the ice will dissolve. A pinch is enough. Wait for one minute and then gently pull the string. And there you go, the ice has stuck to the string. For this experiment, you're gonna need an empty, clean soda can. Turn on the kettle and wait until it begins to boil. Carefully hold the can over the kettle using kitchen tongs. It will help fill it with hot steam. When the can is full of steam, give it an ice bath. You can put it into a bowl with cold water and ice cubes. The can should wrinkle up right away. That's because the volume inside the can decreases, reducing its pressure and allowing the external pressure to crush the can. The next trick is also about air pressure. You're gonna need a glass bottle, a small piece of paper, a lighter, and a peeled boiled egg. The diameter of the bottleneck should be less than the width of the egg. And it's important to use glass because plastic can melt. Now carefully light the paper let it burn a little bit and drop it inside the bottle. Put the egg on the neck of the bottle. It should begin to bounce. And soon, the pressure of air will push the egg into the bottle. Have you ever noticed you sometimes make choices you can hardly explain? Well, psychology did all the work for you. But before we jump into the world of mind traps, how about a short one question quiz? Do you know how many people live in India? If not, feel free to take an educated guess. You probably know it's not the record breaker, but it takes second place, so it must be a lot. Probably more than a billion people, but definitely less than eight billion. So, let's say two billion. You were close to the correct answer, 1.417 billion, and it's a good example of the anchoring effect in action. You took some familiar data, used it as anchors, and based your conclusion around them, in this case, the anchoring effect helped you out, but it can also be the bad guy. Let's say you're thinking of buying a new suitcase. You see one for $400 in the shop window. That's too much. But then you walk inside and find the super sale corner. There, the suitcase costs $100, and the offer is, of course, time limited. You get excited because you now use the first suitcase as your mental anchor and buy the on-sale item without much thinking. You didn't plan to make the purchase today, and you only bought that very suitcase because it was cheaper. That's the kind of anchoring marketing experts use to sell you things you don't really need. Do you also have that one friend who's a fan of personality tests? They claim that those descriptions he gets at the end sound so strikingly true, and just like them, right? The same goes for horoscopes. 
How did they know that they were going to have so many amazing moments in February? Well, you gotta thank the Barnum Effect for that amazing accuracy. Your brain fills in the gaps in vague and general statements that could be true for anyone to make you link them with your life. And because we all prefer to hear nice things about ourselves, we believe the positive statements with greater ease. As for the negative ones, your brain usually treats them skeptically. That's why they mostly write something nice in the results section of those tests. Halo Effect is another popular mind trap. To see how it works, meet Jane, an HR specialist. Jane has two candidates for the position of manager. Susan is a Harvard graduate with an extraordinarily high IQ. She is ambitious and diligent, has zero work experience, and finds it hard to control her emotions. The second candidate is Sarah. She sometimes loses her temper, doesn't have any work experience, and is diligent and ambitious. Her IQ is extra high, and she graduated from Harvard. So, let me guess. Do you think Jane chose Susan? She also won me over at Harvard. But in fact, the two candidates have exactly the same characteristics, just the order of listing was different. The halo effect makes us single out the first piece of information we get and base our judgment on it. That's why we often jump to wrong conclusions based on some qualities we attribute to a person without even knowing them. Harvard graduate must be an ideal fit. The rest doesn't really matter. If you want your vision of the world to be more objective, don't let your brain take such mental shortcuts and try to move beyond first impressions. Remember the last time you had a bad hair day? Spilled coffee on a white shirt or wore mismatched socks by accident and everyone was staring at you? In fact, they weren't. But the spotlight effect made you feel like that. When you're focused on something, your brain makes you believe everyone else is focused on that as well. You're naturally the center of your own universe and you see the world through your experiences and perspective. The good news is that others do the same, so you don't have to worry about that stain or your weird sock choices. You just bought a new hair dryer that all celebrities have, and the whole internet praises it nonstop. It was super expensive, but definitely worth it, right? You start reading online reviews, you test the gadget, you even do the math to figure out how much money you saved. Now you don't need a hairstylist anymore. Yay, it looks like you did make the right decision after all. No matter if it's buying a hairdryer or dropping out of college, admit one thing. You don't like to be wrong. It's in human nature to look for confirmation that you're doing the right thing or believe your opinion is the only right one. You gotta thank confirmation bias for it. It makes you look for and find evidence that you're on the right path, even when some signs point to no. So even if you do find some negative reviews on the hairdryer here and there, your brain just helps you successfully ignore them. You prefer to feel like you always know exactly what to do, so you give more weight to evidence supporting your choices. Imagine your favorite team loses one, two, three, four, five games in a row. It happens so many times that you're sure they just have to win the sixth game. And then you toss a coin and it lands on tails three times in a row, so you feel like it has to land on heads next. Congrats, you've just been subject to the Monte Carlo fallacy. It's a mistaken belief that past events influence the future, so you can predict the outcome of any game or bet. This mind trap got its name after one memorable evening in Monte Carlo. The black color came up 29 times on the roulette wheel. A lot of people lost lump sums of money because they were sure it would be impossible for the wheel to bring up the color black more than 10 times in a row, and they placed whole fortunes on the color red. That's great proof that you can't always build logical connections between events to predict the future. Mark is planning a summer vacation, and he finds a beautiful package deal for $2,000 for seven days. Hmm, it's a bit too much. But then he keeps scrolling, and he sees other offers which start from $5,000. Looks like the first one wasn't such a bad deal after all. The price of the tour package hasn't changed by a cent, but Mark is now ready to pay that price. Well, looks like the contrast effect has just tricked him into making an expensive purchase. It's successfully used in sales and also affects your everyday life. You'd probably feel like you're worse at math than you really are if you're placed in a class full of students who excel at it. A medium-priced car will look cheaper standing next to a luxurious vehicle. The contrast effect works in so many ways and situations that scientists still don't have one explanation for how it works. Imagine you're planning to spend a while in a foreign country, 
and you're choosing the best plan for your cell phone. The first option costs $20 and has one gigabyte of internet per month. Not enough to cover your needs, but the price is good. The second plan includes five gigabytes and costs $40. It seems like a lot, but then you discover that you can pay $50 and get eight gigabytes of data. You don't really need that much, but because the difference between the second and the third plans is so little, you choose the eight gigabytes option. Well, without knowing, you just fell in the decoy effect trap. When you find it hard to choose between two options, adding the third one, or rather, a decoy, can push you towards one of the choices. The decoy makes one of the options look much better, and marketing pros gladly use this trap to motivate you to spend and consume more than you really need.